hello, I'm Retro Jules, and welcome to World of Tanks, and welcome to my garage. This is my T-54E1, an American Tier 9 medium, a very large tank, a little bit sluggish, not designed for face-to-face -face battle, but an excellent flanking and support tank. There's two directions you can take to get to this tank on the tech tree. One being the Bulldog route, so you go from the Bulldog to the T-49 Derp light tank to this, which isn't the most logical route, but it's more varied. Or you come from the T-71 auto-loading light tank to the Tier 8 T-69 auto-loading medium, which then leads you to the Tier 9 T-54E1 auto-loading medium. More logical route. So there's two ways you can get to it. So the armour on this tank, it's one of the better armoured tier 9 mediums. It's got 110 on the front, 76 on the sides, and 127 on the front turret. The, the gun, it's an oscillating turret housing the gun, and it's got one of the weakest penetrating guns of 210mm. That's 58mm down on the Centurion and the Leopard at the same tier. It's got a four shell auto loading drum, it takes 33 seconds to reload your drum, which isn't too bad. And you've got a great two second reload between each of the shells and each shell does 390 damage. And if you compare that to the L103 tier nine American heavy, that's only 10 less than the heavy's gun. So it does excellent damage. However, you do need to be careful with the accuracy of this gun. It's a typical American tank. They're not overly accurate, and this is even worse. It's 0.4 on the accuracy, so not really a sniping vehicle. You, you need to be relatively close to your targets to do your flanking and supporting. The depression's okay on the gun. There's a few elevation issues if you're aiming really, really high, but nothing overly noticeable. Now the speed on this tank is is pretty poor. It's quite sluggish due to the fact that it's got some armor and it's got a top speed of 44 kilometers per hour. It is one of the slowest mediums at tier nine, but it's got a good traverse speed and as a result makes it actually quite good for maneuvering and just getting yourself out of sticky situations. When you compare the top speed to the other tanks, you've got the Lorraine, the Leopard and the E50 they're all 60 kilometers an hour plus. So they are much faster tanks, but they are much lighter on their armor. Now, what you've got to be careful of with this tank is it is big. This is a big medium tank. It's the same size as the Tiger II, which is pretty big anyway. Um, and it's just probably just a little bit smaller than the tier nine French Heavy, the AMX 5120. So that's something you need to bear in mind when you are rolling around the battlefield, that is, you can be quite a target. You, you do have to play this tank as a flanking and support vehicle and aim for the soft spots due to its poor penetration. But when you do aim for the soft spots, if you get a tank side on, you're going to do a lot of damage very, very quickly. So the strengths of this tank are that it's, it's quite manoeuvrable. And it's got an unrelenting gun. If you can flank a tank and he's on half health and you turn up, you are going to annihilate that tank before he can get his second shot in. In, in eight seconds, you are going to have released one and a half thousand damage, which will take out most tanks. So the weaknesses of this tank is definitely its size and its speed. And it has very poor rear and side armor. Frontally, it is quite a strong tank. If you come face to face with this tank, you can hit anything in the side or the rear, it'll go in, no problem. Uh, you can aim for the lower glacis at the front, as you normally would. The commander's cupola, but you do need to be careful because the shape of the, the pike nose, or the fluted shape of the turret, do, does encourage bouncing a lot. It's quite a thick turret, and you can play this tank hull down and if people do aim for your cupola, the chances are they're going to bounce. So it's quite handy for that. The, you can aim for its ammo rack, and you'll probably do that without realising. The American ammo racks are 
held down in the front of the hull and if you aim for the front idler wheels side on which you would normally do to try and track the vehicle chances are you'll take his ammo rack out as well because it's right behind now the equipment I've got on this tank I've got ventilation just to try and prove as many things as I can optics because it's view range is a little bit on the shy side so just to try and give myself an advantage out there on the battlefield and vertical stabilizers because the trying to shoot on the move and the dispersion between shots on this tank is dreadful so as most auto loaders are so just trying to keep that under control because you've got a two second gap between each shot you, you can end up firing shots before they're fully aimed quite easily so that's enough details about the tank let's show you it out in the battlefield So we're on Redshire on a beautiful sunny day. It's a tier 10 game, mainly tier 9 and tier 8, and we're a tier 9 American medium. So we're nicely tiered. We just need to be careful of the tier 10s that are out there. So we're going to head straight for the east. There's only two mediums in this game. So as a result, the mediums really are effectively the scouts. So we're kind of responsible for a little bit of spotting. And you can see, even though this tank isn't particularly fast, it's faster than the rest of our squad. And we're, we're doing quite nicely 44, 43 kilometers an hour now. So it, it is fast enough. And bearing in mind, you're not normally scouting in this. You're normally flanking and supporting. So we're just going to roll up here where there's a little bit of cover and straight away we've got a T-32 side on which is very nice, first shot misses, stick one nicely in the side, one in the engine and we finish him off. One clip unloaded, one tank kill, a great start. So as a result of taking that tank out, we didn't actually get to do any spotting there. So we're very strong here with four tank destroyers and two heavies. So we need to try and pick off the targets now when they're not looking at us. We need to be a little bit careful on this ridge because I can be exposed from fire from up on the hill over in the west. And yes, I'm taking fire already doing an auto aim on this VK and not pulling it off at all and getting hammered from over the hill so we'll pull down and you'll see actually that the reload time on this on this drum is, isn't too bad we're just gonna sort of relocate not go too far and by the time we sort of come back and getting ready for for action we're pretty much reloaded. reloaded so I'm really wanting to go up on that ridge but I'm thinking better of it we've got plenty down here right so one IS-7 left don't fancy my chances with him, there's a KV-4 at the back Get a shot on his tracks. There we go, and we get a shot on his lower glacis. And that isn't bad accuracy on that distance. And you do have to be careful with this tank. You, you do need to try and make each shell count because you have got a fairly long reload, but also you're not carrying that big a quantity of shells and ammunition. Right, so we've got a rock hard T95. Now there is a way you can take a T95 out on the front, and that's aim between his tracks. Once you've tracked him, you can then aim to the inside. So there's there is some tracks, and they you just aim not under there, but just there you go, just inside there, and you can penetrate. 
So just letting the other team I'm reloading, that's why I'm hiding. Now the plan is to to go forward and hide behind the hills while I reload, because he, he's not interested in me, he's not turning. And then I decide that now he's not interested in me, so I'm going to take a chance, even though I'm not reloaded, and see if I can do some damage. And by the time I get there, I'm nicely reloaded. Do an auto aim. Don't penetrate the side, probably not going to, but we are going to be able to penetrate there. Yes, we set him on fire and our team take him out. Now I choose not to push forward here because I don't really know who's out there and I'm not reloaded. We're only two tanks ahead, so the game could go either way at this stage. I see one. And we spot one up on the hill, a Tiger 2. Oh, nicely with his back to us. Enemy is hit. So we get some Enemy nice shots loaded. on the move. And we take a shot from over on the right hand side. And from the left, oh, yeah, we're getting hammered now. And this is where we need to be careful because we're, we're a big tank. So it's a little bit difficult to hide. So we just roll down here. Stay out of the way while we reload. Now I don't know where that shot came from on the right. I don't know what's out there. I didn't see him come up on the map. So I'm going to wait for the cavalry to come in. I'm not going to take any chances. Because one shot is all it'll take to take me out now. And now, as you'll have noticed in this game, that no shots bounced off me. I wasn't facing anybody head on. It was all side on, and the shots will go in. You, you are soft as putty on the side. So it's a KV-4. He must have been the guy that shot at me. Now, I, I do have penetration issues with the KV-4, so I've got to be careful. I can hit his lower glacis and I probably haven't got the accuracy to hit his cupola so I need to be fairly close and he's on full health so I am definitely going to wait so it's him and a tank destroyer left one of our heavies is going in, he's, he's ready to crack on a KV-4 versus a KV-4 and ah, that's what we want, we've got him side on. One shot in, two shots in, aim for his engine and we take him out beautifully. So, so this is a good game for us, we've destroyed two tanks, spotted three, we've done two assisting damage, we've got six assisted damage and 18 shots in, of which 11 were critical hits. So there's the tank destroyer over in the southwest. So we'll head on over. We're fully loaded now and he's been taken out. Sorry, he hasn't been taken out. One of our tank destroyers has been taken out. I was umming and ahhing about actually trying to go to that part of the map thinking everybody else will beat me, but actually now that that tank destroyer has been taken out, we stand a good a chance of getting there as anyone else. I'm not sure what our heavy is doing in the base. I don't even know if he's moving. I don't know if he's been there since the start of the game. So we're just going to carry on through and well obviously my tank's not strong enough to break brick walls I'm not quite sure why I didn't get through there but either way he was taken out so how did we do overall 61,000 silver very happy with that just over six and a half thousand XP on the first win of the day and a couple of missions 
few medals. 6,000 damage, so we, we were good. Our, our shots were going in, they were accurate and doing damage. And we came top. Sorry, didn't we came second. But a good result in the T-54E1. It really is a good flanking and support tank. And even on paper, it doesn't sound that good. But I do get on with it.